if you put a positive thing out, good things will come into your life. Like if you're just going to look at the glass half empty, then you're going to have a half empty life. What I did was I used this time of the pandemic to actually grow as an artist. And it's really put me over the top now because I've progressed and I built everything I worked so hard for to the point of like, I'm, I'm really doing amazing now. And it, it's, yeah. it's, it's pretty incredible. And I'm realizing that and then I'm back on the so road. I, you know, at first I was on stage and I'm jumping around. And like, you can't even play. Stop, stop jumping around. Like, you know, like, you know, like, I know you want to get into it, but like, you're not even playing the songs. Like, it's, it's, oh it's horrible. God. Like, I really didn't know what I was doing before I joined the band. It was really funny. Oh it's God. amazing I am where I am now. Like, <laughs> I got by a personality. But, you know, I've always just been a positive, easygoing person to be around. And I think that's what has helped me to be successful. I got into doing Muay Thai and combat sports, you know, a little jiu-jitsu. You wouldn't believe, like, how much that helps me, like, mentally. Welcome to the Collaborative Resource Hub by Wellness Provisions. We're bridging the gap between mental health, wellness, and rock and roll. I'm Amy McBride, owner of Wellness Provisions, the most badass wellness business. Hey, are you feeling a little stuck in life? I offer wellness coaching sessions. Book a session with me if you're seeking to get healthy and ahead. Sessions are available worldwide. And check this out. Wellness Provisions supplies rock and rollers with high quality supplements. We've simplified your shopping experience and given you a trustworthy place to go where you can essentially shop blindfolded. And did you know, all our Collaborative Resource Hub interviews air on YouTube as well as all major podcast platforms. Subscribe to stay in the loop. Go immerse yourself in the full Collaborative Resource Hub experience over on our website. You'll have access to helpful resources that will inspire and educate you. So let's inspire each other. If that guy did it, so can you. Last but not least, my legal disclaimer, nothing in this interview or the Collaborative Resource Hub substitutes medical advice Please connect with your GP if you need medical guidance. Mike from Agnostic Front, how are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing very well. I'm warm actually right now. I don't have the air conditioning on, but I'm I'm surviving. Oh, we live on air conditioning. Like, is my room is upstairs. You know, heat rises. Like, we've had this AC cranking for the past um, week already. Like, that's it. Summer's here. You know, I love air conditioning. I'm an American. You know, <laughs> American at heart. I'll deal because I'm going to be dealing with no air conditioning for a month over in Europe. As much as I love going there, and I can't wait. I know that I'm going to be sweating my ass off over there. Like that's right. You know? Yeah. <laughs> well, you can like prepare for it. I don't know. Oh yeah, mentally. Yeah. <laughs> so I usually ask people to describe the sound of their band, like sonically, but. I'm pretty sure everybody knows what Agnostic Front sounds like. So instead, I want you to describe your artwork as an artist. What does your artwork look like to someone who's not seen your stuff before? How can I explain my artwork? I mean, I can kind of like sum it up into like little, um, it, it's like, see, when I make artwork, I, I, like, I throw it out if I don't want to keep looking at it. You know what I mean? Like, I have to like, I have to be like, wow, I, I can't stop looking at this because like, it has to be like eye candy. It has to be, you know, that's why I've always been um, into like graffiti and pop art. And mm -hmm. that's kind of like a combination of stuff that I do, you know, like very, you know, cause I, you know, I started doing graffiti when I was like 15 as a kid. And, um, you know, I was never like, a, um, I was never really like, I mean, there's some guys that like going out there and like their names are fucking everywhere. You call them <laughs> yeah. heavy hit. Like, I was never really a heavy hitter, you know, but I just always been into the lifestyle and um, and I've always done art and like cartoon art and gr always like incorporated graffiti into it. And um, that's like so my art's kind of like pop art, graffiti, street art. Um, yeah. And I work with a lot of epoxies now, too. So that's it's like all that wrapped up in one, you know, it's just like I try to make it as interesting and eye catchy as possible, you know, not yeah. too intricate. Um, simple, but effective, you know, I it's kind of like punk rock. Yeah. Yeah. You know there you I mean? go. <laughs> you know, and that's how I always like, you know, that that's like another a, a way to look at it. Like, I always like, I've never considered myself to be like a great artist, you know what I mean? But like, it's just like punk rock. Punk rock is not like, we're not like the greatest musicians, but like, it's simple. It's, it's, it's hard. It's a, you know, it's just. How can I explain this? I'm getting caught it's, up right now. <laughs> it's, it's like, it's welcoming. 
I mean, yeah, you know, and is, like you know? everyone can em- enjoy it and it's not like too sophisticated or too technical. Yeah, it's just fun to look at, you know, it's just like, so all right, this is how, this is how I like to explain those. I always consider myself like, like, like punk rock, like if you, you could, you could, if you could just put your heart and soul into it, like it, it shows. And that's just like with, with punk rock, you know what I mean? You could feel it, you know, you could, mm-hmm. you, could you know, like people look at my art, like I could tell you put a lot of time into it, you know, like. So yeah. I do like a mad scientist when I'm like doing my stuff. I hang and I'm looking at it, like, what does it mean? Sometimes I'll sometimes I'll finish it in like a day, and then sometimes I'll it'll take me a week or sometimes a month, or even sometimes like sometimes I have to put stuff away. Just like I can't even look at this thing and then put it on the side and one day be like, oh yeah, I know what that needs. Boom, it's done. Yeah. It's like, oh wow. It took me a fucking a year to figure that out. It's crazy. That's that's cool though. I mean, cause like you're not forcing it, and I think that's part of why it's got like soul. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's kind of like when you're writing a song, and you put so much, you're putting so much into it to to to, to make this song like right, and then like you put it on the record, and it's like an album track, and you go into the studio and you write a song in the studio, and that's like the hit of the record. Like you, you put, it's just effortless. Like it's just has to come naturally you know like That's organically it. or you know what i mean like yeah you put too much into something and sometimes it doesn't work out but uh-huh um, you know. yeah it's forced and you can yeah yeah, yeah totally it doesn't it's yeah agreed <laughs> um so what does wellness mean to you what does wellness mean to me yeah i um, shift gears pretty quick into the wellness theme <laughs> you know um Definitely, um, like wellness is like you know, like your mental health. I would imagine, right? You know what I mean. I'm saying, like you know, like what your status of, you know, what you're feeling or what's running through your brain, you know, and mm-hmm. been a lot of these through this whole pandemic. It's been pretty fucking. Excuse my language. It's been pretty wild, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, yeah. I mean for sure it is. It's the state of like your your mental health. Absolutely. Yeah. Totally. I mean. Yeah. It's funny because um, as far as like, like depression and stuff, like, you know, like I've never dealt with depression ever, I guess. And I, but I, but I've, I've definitely felt some, some waves of it through this pandemic, which mm-hmm. is pretty wild. You know what I mean? That I never in my life, like my wife was always just like, I don't understand how you just wake up happy every day. Like, how the fuck do you do that? It's a gift, you know? And I just like, I don't know. I just. I just always been that way, you know, like, but, but I struggled with a little bit of depression. Absolutely. To this, just everything that the world's gone through, just, you know, seeing, I mean, just everything that happened, like, you know, that wasn't yeah. at our hands, you know what I yeah. mean? Like it, it just, it fucked my head a little bit, you know? And yeah. I thank God that like right now I am in a very, very good state of mind, which is really nice. You know what I mean? Like, I thank God I am like, there's times where I hit like lows and stuff where you're just like, oh man, you know, like, but what I did was I used this time of the pandemic to actually grow as an artist. And it's really put me over the top now because I've progressed and I've built everything that I worked so hard for, like to the point of like, I'm, I'm really doing amazing now. And it, it's, yeah. it's, it's pretty incredible. And I'm realizing that and I'm back on the road like we went on the road like that. I felt so alive again. I felt yeah, like that myself makes, again. Yeah, that makes a huge difference because you're with like it's community and you're able to like, I mean, just even getting out of your house like that. I mean, <laughs> that makes a difference. Yeah, yeah, totally. You know, I was only able to like, I did like an art show in Chicago, an art show in LA. I got away for a weekend, which was really nice. I had a lot of fun. But, you know, I mean, I've been on the road for 21 years. So it's for me to be stuck at home for two and a half after touring for that long, it was just like a complete mind fuck. You know, it was really wild. So, cause, okay. So you said you kind of like got more into your art and stuff. So was that like a conscious choice? Like I have to like, you're sitting down, like I got to do something for myself. I got to pick myself up. Or was it just like, it just kind of organically unfolded that way. A little bit of both, a little bit of survival mode. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. Um, unemployment's not there anymore. Like you need to, you know, like, you know, you got, you know, you got money coming in from the band. You know what I mean? It was just like, either you get down to business or, um, 
go work at McDonald's or something, you know what I mean? And it's just like, I didn't want to do that. Not that there's anything wrong with that, you know what I mean? But like, I didn't want, I don't want to do that. Yeah. You know, I've done everything from delivering pizza, working construction, landscaping. Like I've, I've done it all. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to do it anymore. I've yeah. done that when I did that when I was a kid, you know, like, and I'm just like at a point now, like where I'm just doing music and art and I put everything into it. You know what I mean? Like nothing was giving to me. You know what I mean? Like, um, you know, I, I think I wound up in, in the band because of the love that I had for this music. And I think that the guys in the band saw that, how much I was into it and how easygoing I am. They were like, yeah, we'll take this guy. You know what I mean? Like, because I remember when we, I tried out, it was one of the guys trying out for when we did the AF thing. Yeah. And uh, I remember at the time, the drummer, Jimmy Coletti, who's still a good friend of mine. I remember like, like I played some songs with them. The other guy played some songs with them. And uh, the drummer was like, come on, let's go get some beers, you know? And I'm like, oh yeah, all right. I'm like, Here comes the letdown, you know what I mean? Like, you know, all right, kid, you know, we like you, but. So we walked through, we walked through the hallway, walk outside the door. They slapped me on the back. He goes, you're in kid, you know? I was like, yeah. I was like, you know, that guy was a lot better than me. And he goes, <laughs> He goes, I've got to be honest with you. You're a horrible bass player, but we really like you. He goes, it's bass. You'll figure it out. Don't worry about it, you know? <laughs> but I mean, but that's like a whole thing like that just speaks. I mean, it applies to like everything. Like you can teach like a skill, but you can't teach the passion, you know, the interest, the just the natural like charisma of a person. You can't teach that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, they're like, they got, like we got to be on the road with this guy. You know, like, you know, we need somebody that's easygoing, somebody that's fun, and that's me. You know? <laughs> so how long did it take you to get more proficient with bass? Oh, man. Let me tell you something. So the first tour I went on was with Rise Against, The Casualties, TSOL, and us. Oh, my God. Uh, and uh, on the first week of the tour, they were just like, man, we like you, kid, but like, you got like like you're not really cutting it like it's, it's it's like you know i mean you know it sounded horrible you know like but roger they all like roger helped me um ron from tsol like those guys like they like sat with me and kind of like you know showed me like what i was playing wrong and like so i just like you know at first i was on stage and i'm jumping around and, like you can't even play stop stop jumping around like you know like you know like, i know you want to get into it but, like you're not even playing the songs like it's it's, oh it's horrible so it took me, I mean, like by the end of the tour, I was rocking. Yeah. You know, I was doing all right, you know, and then from there, I just, and then it just, it, it all worked out, you know, 21 years later, here I am still like, <laughs> but I was, I, they were ready, to, they were ready to get ready because it was, it was terrible. I didn't sound good. I went from like being, I never really took any lessons. Like I was in a, a band that would play like once a month, you know what I mean? Like just playing in my garage, like, you know, like, and I, I, I really was not a good musician. Did you practice? Any like back oh then. i did i did i practiced and i i had no choice just being on the road playing so much was just that's how i learned yeah I learned just being on stage basically you know like like i really didn't know what i was doing before i joined the band it was really funny yeah but, oh my it's God. amazing i am where i am now like <laughs> i got by a personality yeah well congratulations <laughs> school school as well <laughs> um Okay, so you mentioned just being like a positive person. And I feel like that's, I mean, yeah, you just have like a radiance. So like, is that, I mean, really like, did you just like, you know, you were born and boom, you've always been positive or is it something that you've been like aware of and tried to cultivate? I just think that's just me. That's <laughs> just, you know, yeah, really, you know what I mean? Like, I, I mean, I, I didn't even get into like hardcore to like, to like senior year in high school you know i met a friend of mine who, who um from staten island came over and i was always into music and he's like you ever listen to hardcore and i was like, nah you know so i really didn't even know about the whole pma thing i was just always a pretty um positive guy i, I don't know i mean to be honest with you like you know i, I know a lot of guys like in the early hardcore scene like they grew up they grew up hard they had hard lives you know what i mean be, to be completely honest with you i had great parents i had a good life you know what i mean like my parents were fucking amazing they were supportive whatever i wanted to do whoever i wanted to be like whatever they've always supported me and they were musicians too so i mean like ah, okay you know so they had the music thing in me but um yeah like 
I don't know. My parents are good people, and I guess they just raised me pretty well. And um, I mean, I'm far from perfect. <laughs> God knows that. But you know, I've always just been a, a positive, easygoing person to be around, and I think that's what has helped me to be successful. Yeah. You know, it really has. You know, even my brother, like, he's like, I, I don't, I don't know how you just, I don't know how you do it. You know what I mean? He's just like. He's like, you're just like this easygoing dude. It's just like, you know, it doesn't let anything bother you. But that, that's not really true. Well, I'm yeah, very easy. So, everything bothers me, but I just, I, I had to deal with it, you know? Well, and that's what I was going to say next then. So how do you deal with adversity or just challenges or like, you know, negative feedback or whatever? How do you deal with that? Punching bag. <laughs> Literally. Yeah, okay. That, that's one thing that's really helped me through, um, through this whole pandemic was not only just doing my art was I got into doing Muay Thai. Ah, cool. And combat sports, you know, a little jujitsu, but I, I lean more towards um, Muay Thai. I, I just, I just like it more. I hate being trapped on the floor all the time. You know, I like throwing punches. My grandfather was a boxer. Oh, cool. So um, that, that really helps me. And like, you, you wouldn't believe like how much that helps me like mentally. Like I actually, I didn't, I went on tour for like three weeks and, uh, like the week before I wasn't able to train getting ready. And then a week coming home, like, so I didn't train for like over a month. And then I came back and I went like last Tuesday and I walked out of that class being like, Oh my God. Like I just, that just made me feel so like, I guess it's the endorphins that, you know, the, I don't know what it is. It just, it really helps me so much. Like I, like, I don't think I'll be able to live without it. I mean, like I'm sure as I get older, I have to do it like on a, you know, I'll be a little more fragile, you know? But if you're, but, you know, I mean, kind of, but if you keep maintaining, you know, the, that level of like athleticism, then you'll be able to like do it way longer and older than uh, someone else. Oh yeah. And even when I'm old, I'll just hit the bag. It just won't get hit by anybody else. But like we sparred like last night, like my coach cracked me real hard. He's like, keep your fucking hands up. You know what I mean? And I was like, oh shit. I noticed this morning I got a little black eye. I was like, yeah, I'm going to go on tour with a black eye. I was like, I love it. <laughs> ahead of the game <laughs> great um so how do you balance stress in your day-to-day -day? is it like exercise stuff or is there anything else that you do for yourself I just try to keep busy okay you know as far as like uh keeping busy is is a main thing you know what I mean that keeps keeps your brain going and I always have so much to do and there's just always I just try to keep myself as busy as possible I do the lawn at my house. I like to do that. That's like a good kind of like, I don't know. It's good. It's like exercise that you have to do. And then I like keeping my, my yard looking nice. And you know, that, that helps that, you know, I'm always, you know, working out and doing art. And um, when I'm really stressed out, I'll smoke a joint, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> that helps, you know, that definitely helps. You is, know? Your, is your yard really well landscaped? Yeah, very well. And I have a really big corner property. Hmm. So like, like when I first started doing it, it I mean, it, it take me out of take me like the whole day to do it, you know? And like, my wife's like, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, I'm just like chipping away all, all around the edges, every fucking weed, like, you know, and now like this year, I'm just like, oh man, you know what? I, I could leave a couple of leads, weeds laying around, you know what I mean? It, it's too big to get, it's like, you know, I don't have the time to, to really, you know, like during the pandemic, I was home. Yeah. You know what I mean? We were home. I had the time to do that. You know, now I'm like, ah, it's all right. You know, I'll edge it once a week. I'll, I'll edge it every other week. I'll weed whack it every other week. Just mow it down, you know, weed it every other week. But I was like, I'm throwing mulch down. Fuck this weed and bullshit. <laughs> I can't take it anymore. It's too much. That, that plastic stuff or whatever. Yeah. As yeah, a barrier. Put, yeah. You put the plastic underneath and then yeah. you put it all over it. Yeah. I'm going to do that because the weeding is too much. My yard is, it's huge. It's, it's too much. Like, you know, like, like I said, when I was home for two and a half years, I had the time to do it. It was, you know, nothing but time. Yeah. But now, now, now it's just like life is back. Now I'm like back in the most touring and constantly, you know, there's, there's so much going on now. It's, it's so nice to just be back to life again. It's like yeah. really fully, fully amazing. immersed, fully immersed in life. Yeah. It's like, God, like, Thank God. Is there anything <laughs> healthy that you try and maintain while you're on tour for yourself or just simply being present? 
Um, I mean, I try to work out on the road. If in the states, it's nearly impossible. I do a lot of driving. It, it's, I find it tough. I mean, you honestly, you can do it. You really, yeah. really, really, really want to do it. You can make time. It's just I have a hard time with it. In Europe, it's a little bit easier. I don't drive there. You wake up, you're at the club, you know. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, you know, I, I try to work out. I don't know. I love my job, so it's kind of cool, you know, like, you know. I mean, I, I definitely stress out out there at times, you know. But um, as long as I can see my family, I'm good. Mm -hmm. So that's important. Here's an advert in less than 20 seconds. Did you know that Wellness Provisions offers one-on-one -on -one wellness sessions? Yep. So if you're seeking to get healthy and ahead in life, but feeling a little stuck, then book a session and let's get you unstuck. Now back to the interview. Is there anything that like inspires your creativity? I guess I'm also wondering, like, if anything inspires your creativity, and then if there's a difference between whether you choose to channel it into music or your art. You know, I, you know, I'm, I, I see stuff. Yeah. You, you know what? Like I'll see stuff and I'll see art and I'll be like, yeah, that's really cool. And I'm like, yeah, but if I put my, if I made it like my way, like it'll be cooler. Well, or at least I think it will be. You know what I mean, like, or I, I'll add my thing to it. You know, like, like I see, there's a lot of other artists out there that I see that like I'm influenced by and stuff. And I'm like, I take a little bit of that, a little bit of that. And then my own flavor and put it there together. But, you know, I definitely get inspired by seeing other art, you know, by, um, and I guess musically sometimes like, you know, you hear something, you're like, oh, I like this band, you know, like maybe I'll add a little flavor that to that, my, to my music, you know? And then, yeah. Um, cause I think that like, I think like, especially like when writing music and then like making art, some people like have their influences and then their art looks just like their influences. Right. I know. Which is cool. But like, you know, you have to like combine other things in like, you know, like if your favorite band is Madball and you're writing riffs that sound exactly like Madball, and you're going to sound just like Madball. You're just going to be a carbon copy. You got to find ways to use that influence and then put your own influence in, on other things to, to create something fresh and new. You know, everybody needs influences, you know, you, yeah. you can't, you know, it's just like somebody was like a friend. I was talking to one of the dads at the beach the other day and he's just like how do you write music i don't understand he's like i'm not a musical guy and he's like how did, how does that even come about you know and i'm I trying to explain to him like it's like putting a puzzle together without any pieces you know like you have to kind of that's why i always told him like you know like i'll find a riff that i'm really like moved by like, yeah i like that riff or I like that beat you know and then you kind of use that cadence but change it into your own thing and then you build on that like you know and then and then there's Usually I'll write a verse and a chorus and then write a song around that, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you're exercising, do you get, like, inspiration or ideas to, like, does anything pop into your head when you're exercising? Because I know that's a thing for a lot of musicians. No, not really? really. Yeah, no, not really. I just, yeah, yeah, no. What's really cool is about, like, what I told you, I started doing Muay Thai, which is because, like, I started hating working out. I used because I used to do crazy. I, I would do I, I used to do this one exercise program with myself that I made up. Like I would do a hundred burpees a day, but I would split it up. I wouldn't do a hundred in a row. Like, yeah. I would do ten sets of ten, you know. And I was just like, it's working for me, and it keeps the weight off. But it's just like this is brutal, you know what I mean? And it mm -hmm. sucks, and I'm not enjoying it, you know. So like when I'm doing combat sports, like I'm enjoying it. I'm having yeah. fun. You know what I mean, you know, like. So I'm just, I'm in the moment, like when I'm there, it's just, and I'm learning, you're always learning, you know what I mean? And like, I haven't been doing it that long. You know what I mean, so like, I still suck, but I enjoy it, you know, like I just, I enjoy what I do. Like it's yeah. fun. You know? So when I'm there, I'm in the moment, I'm just trying to learn and pick up as much as possible, you know, like, especially like when a class, like my brain doesn't retain that much, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, so what I try to do is like, whatever I learn in class, I try to remember like bring it home, like one thing you know if you can learn one thing from that lesson yeah and put it in your arsenal and then use that that's that but, but I'm, I'm usually focused on just when i'm working out i'm just focused on that you know because like you, yeah you, you gotta be in it otherwise yeah no that's that's a good point kicked out of you. 
Yeah, yeah, you have to be super present in in it. And then also like being aware of like, yeah, the new like technique stuff that you're trying to pick up. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I've been kind of like thinking of more questions for for people that are parents, um, because I think this is interesting and kind of telling. So um, one thing I've sort of been asking or, you know, trying to get at is, um, since having a kid, how has that impacted how you perceive the world now that you have a child? I mean, I, I feel like it made me a little, a little bit more or less selfish. You know what I mean? Like back then, everything was about me. Mm -hmm. You know, me, me, me. Yeah, totally. You know, so like your life is no longer about you anymore by any means. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like your child is, is your everything. You know, like, you know, there's so much work. It's like, it's the hardest job I've ever had. Like, like, like my top player Stigma, you know, he's just, he's always like, ah, don't worry about it, kids. It's a cakewalk. It's a cakewalk. And I'm like, this is the hardest fucking job I've ever had in my life. You know, like, it's just yeah. so hard, you know, because like, there's no, there's no rule book on being a parent, you know? So it's, um, and as, as a parent, you try to do absolutely everything the best you can for your child, you know, but we're not perfect. You know, sometimes I'll be yelling at my daughter. I'm like, oh my God, like, I don't want her to like, be like, oh, my daddy's always yelling at me. You know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? Like, so it's just like, sometimes you got to check yourself. Like, it's tough. You know what I mean? Like, but it's just the hardest job ever. It's, it's yeah. so hard and it never ends. You know, it's, and each year there's a new level of. A new challenge. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a new challenge. Absolutely. Yeah, just when you think like, oh, yeah, she's finally like, going to sleep good now. Yeah, and then. Then you got to deal with another thing, you know, uh -huh. and then it's, 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 it's always something, you know, it, it's a tough job, you know, but um, you do it because the love of your child, you know, there's, there's nothing like, there's nothing like, like the, what, my proudest moment ever in my life, like forget being on stage, forget like, oh, you know, I love your art, like, I love your band, this, this song helped me get through another day, which is really great and inspiring to keep me, that's kept me doing what I'm doing, you know. But nothing ever made me feel better. I swear, honestly, I, it brought me to tears. I, I was in school with my daughter. It was like a little after school thing she had going on. And one of the custodians in the building was like, hey, Rosie, what's up? Can, can you watch that? I can put something down there. And then uh, he was, and Rosie's like, hey, what's up to the guy? And um, he was just like, he's like, he's like, she's such a doll. She's like, your daughter is such a great kid. Aww. Like She's so awesome. Like, she's like, she's like, and it was like so nice. It brought me to tears to just be like, you know, like, and I hear that a lot in school, like, and they love her there, you know? So like, it's really, I guess like me and my wife were doing something right. <laughs> you know, we may not be perfect, but right. it's really nice to just like hear that, like your child is like really like loved and like she's liked, you know, and she's doing really well in the world already, you know? So yeah. And that's it. It's interesting. Cause it's like, she's out there, you know, like, she's got her she it's I mean she's a kid but it's her own life you know she's yeah. her own person interacting with people and so she's got this little you know like orbit around her and like yeah I don't know that's special she yeah she's you could tell she's likable and all the teachers are always like yeah Rosie's my go-to girl you know like you know like you know, we, need, we need to send a message to, to the, like you know the other class like Rosie go go you know so like you know so everybody in the school likes her you know it's funny, but she's sassy too, you know. Really? Oh my god, yeah. You know, like she was telling me like this morning about like some like an old. She's like, you know, there was a, there was a kid who was older than me, and like you know, and I was telling them that something or whatever, and she didn't want to listen to me, but I'm right, you know. I'm like, oh, well, you know, maybe you're not right, you know. She's like, no, I'm right. And I was like, uh -huh. right. she shouldn't listen to me because I'm the young one, you know. She's like, I know I'm right. <laughs> She's like really funny. I'm like, all right, you know. Fiery. Oh man. Again, yeah. yeah. She really stands up for herself too, which is really nice to see. Like, she doesn't take no shit from anyone. It's nice to really, you know, like yeah. she's definitely like, you know, like, sometimes she could be like a little like sassy and a little mean, like, and like maybe like a little bitchy, but like I kind of like that about her. You know what I mean? Like, you know, like nobody's gonna walk on her. I'd rather her be a little bitchy than a, be. Like, like, yeah, you get like walked, walked on, you know, get stepped over, you know what I mean? Like, it's good to have a little sass in you, you know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. You know, 
a woman needs that, you know? I, it's like, I just thought of this. This is probably something that already totally exists out there, but it's like a rose. A rose is very, and her name's Rosie, right? Yeah. A rose is very pretty, but you've got thorns on it. Oh yeah, 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 totally. Without yeah. a doubt. That's a good way of putting that. That's yeah. really cool. I gotta tell my daughter that. Yeah. I like that. Um, are there any like skills or like values or qualities that you really are trying to instill in her? Yeah, yeah. I mean, of course, you know, like, I mean, of course, we're just teaching her to be the best kid she could be. But like, you know, like we have strong values here at the house. It's just like just to be herself and um, not let anybody walk all over you or just. Uh, I don't know, I, I just to be positive, you know, sometimes she could be a little negative and I try to like get her to be a little more positive like I am, you know, like it's just because it goes such a long way. I know so many of my friends and so many people I know that their negativity follows them. Well, it's what you put, what you put out is what you get back. Absolutely. So that's what I try to teach her. You know, I'm just like, you know, like, like you have to treat everyone like you want to be treated, you know? And I try to tell her that, you know, and um, it's great to be kind. And I always tell her to be kind and be good. But I said, you also need to be realistic. Mm -hmm. You know, which I think the world is really lacking today. Like people aren't realistic about anything, you know, it's just like life is not all about just Instagram and Facebook and that's not the real world. You know, like there's so much out there in the world to see and, you know, it's just there's so much out there, you know, and, and you just have to be positive, like positive. If you put a positive thing out there, like good things will come into your life. Like if you're just going to look at the glass half empty then you're going to have a half empty life. Yeah. You know? And it's really, it's really true. Like if there's anything that I've learned in this, in my 47 years of life is that it's really true. You give what you get, you know, you know, it's like, you, you know, you have to, uh, you can't, you have to put everything into to life. You know what I mean? It's like something I, I always say, I, I actually, I guess I'll save this for the quote or whatever. Okay. Whatever, because it's like, it's something that like I thought of that, like, you have to be positive about everything and you have to give everything in your life. Too. Yeah. Like if, you know, if you want to be successful in life, you have to give everything you got. You have to put yeah. everything you have into it and yeah. you'll succeed. Like, I, like I know myself, like I'll be honest with you. Like I'm not like a book smart guy. I'm really not. You know what I mean? But like, it's not about being book smart, common sense and like being aware of what's going on around you is so important, you know, I guess kind of like a street smart, like I'm not like a street thug guy, you know, but like, you know, you, you have to ha- you have to be aware of what's out there, you know, like, you know, it's, it's an ugly world, you know, yeah. so. Even, I mean, like, I think, cause I feel like this is just like lost these days is just being like, even at the grocery store, being considerate of the people around you. Are you like pushing your cart down the middle of the fucking aisle? Or are you off to yep. the side? Are you just like standing there texting? Someone's trying to reach your, it's just Absolutely. like that stuff is just doesn't exist anymore. It's and so you funny that you mentioned. Yeah. And you can't learn that in school. Yeah. You know, and that's exactly like what I was like, there's, there's this one lady that picks up her daughter, or actually her son from school. And I, I can't stand her because like, she's just so inconsiderate the way she parks. And I always tell Rosie, I said, look, I said, what you have to do, like, especially when you're driving, you have to think, you can't just think about yourself when you're driving. You have to worry about everybody else around you. And like, you know, like, look at how this lady's parked. Like she's parked right in the middle over here and she's taking up like three spots. And I said, these are things you need to take into consideration. You have to look out for others and make sure that like, it all works out like, oh, where should I park? Where am I going to park where it's going to take up the less space? And she's like, I don't understand what you're talking about, Daddy. I'm like, don't worry <laughs> about it. I'll just, I'll just keep drilling that into your head. You'll eventually going to get it. And yeah. You just can respect every, others around you. And that's what's important because it's not all about you. Yeah. And, you know, I'm actually, I'm wondering now, and I have no idea how to successfully poll this, but if people who are less aware and considerate of those around them, maybe are they like super book smart? You know what I mean? Because like, that's the thing, like people who are really, really like smart, you know, like with school stuff, often they lack social skills. Like, yeah, you know, totally. Like, I always remember like in grade school, there was like the smartest kid in the class. He was like 
complete like he couldn't he couldn't socialize mm-hmm. but he was so goddamn smart it was like insane you know like and but he had no social skills yep this is like how are you gonna get by in life i don't give a shit how smart you are like you need to be able to deal with other people in life that's like you know like that's it's so important in a job keeping a job yep you know what i mean like you know it's it's so important that's like another thing i try to teach my daughter it's like you know like socially like and she's super social she has so many friends her friends love her it's like it makes me happy that like all right she's good socially she'll be good you know like yeah it's, it's so important you know i mean honestly like i said i'm not the sharpest crayon on the box but like like when it comes to like social like you know what i mean like yeah, you know, I'm fun to be around. I'm easy to be around. Like, you know, and it's, it's important. It's so important, you know? And yeah. Like, that's what helped me keep my job. When I got the job, I couldn't even do the job. But they liked me so much, they kept me around, you know? Like, it's important. It really yeah. is, you know? Social skills is the most important thing about school. That's why, like, I'm not big on the whole homeschooling thing. It, it, it I believe that there's a lot of good, factors that may come out of that you know what I mean? yeah because schools suck right you know what i mean but in school you know you learn social skills you learn how to deal with life you learn how to yeah. deal with people you know what i mean and, and the so challenges important. yeah and the challenges that come up in a big classroom like yeah it's not ideal like maybe your kid's not getting all the attention that they need whatever but like i mean like that stuff's important to be around too Yes, because they need to learn that it's not all about them. You know what I mean? Sometimes life is shitty. You're going to get stepped on and yeah, you know, maybe left behind one day or maybe somebody's not going to want to play with you that day. And you got to learn how to deal with that. You know, like yeah. you get, it's it, that's why, you know, I would never want to homeschool my kid. Although, you know, I, there's a lot of crazy shit going on in the world. I can understand why some parents want to do that because I'm sure there's definitely pros to that as well right and I know a lot uh, of like homeschooling um I think it's like common to like there's groups like like area groups like if you homeschool your kid then like they get like they go to the park and like all hang out so there is like that social component well that's good and there's supposed a lot of parents that do that and make sure they put them in a lot of after school things which they need to they have to so you know you can get that in there but the whole thing of going through school and just that you know the hard stuff is what shapes you (laughs) yeah you know yes if it sucks it sucks you know i mean i I mean i I don't mean if it sucks like sometimes if it's a little rough like i might teach you some lessons in life too you know as long as they're getting a good education you know Mm -hmm. but um but i guess if you live in a place where your school is really completely terrible i guess that's you know i get it hey you know each situation is different, you know what I mean? Each yeah. child is different. Um, every situation is different, you know? I mean, yeah. there's pros and cons in everything. You That's know what, what I mean? I like, say, and yeah. you just have to do what works best for you. But um, just the whole, it's all about social skills. Social skills is the number one key to life. I believe. I, I mean, it yeah. works for me, you know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> You're a walking testimonial. <laughs> yeah, you know. I mean, like I said, I'm not perfect, but like, you know, I think I live a good, happy, successful life, you know, and I don't think a lot of people could honestly say that, you know? Yeah. So you say you're not perfect. The things that you see could use improvement. Do you work on those things or do you just like, eh, they're there? Eh." (laughs) Oh, well, you know, no, I work on them. Absolutely. You know, um, sometimes I'm quick to fly off the handle, you know, I could like snap, you know, like, you know, sometimes I find myself like, like they get yelling at my daughter, you know, it's like, ah, oh, you know, like, and there's definitely a lot of times when my wife was like, you know, you're a little rough on her, you know, and it's like, man, you know, it's like, yeah, so believe me, I try to work on stuff like that, you know, like, who, who, who's perfect, but yeah, I definitely try to work on whatever yeah. flaws I have, you know. What's helped with your short fuse? Has any, has anything been helping you with that? Because I, that's something that um, I still am working on with myself. Yeah, I'm, um, you know, I'm, um, combat sports you know that that helps a lot you know if you want to get aggravated go outside hit the bag a little bit you know that helps um i'm still working on it yeah. <laughs> you, know? you know i still 
Yeah. I mean, getting older, I'm not, I, I don't know. I just, I do sometimes I have like a short fuse sometimes, you know, and I can't help it. You know what I mean? But I'm one of those people like I'll, I'll blow up and then do them dumb. Right. I just have to get it off my chest and, yeah. um, you know, but not that that yeah. makes it right. You know? No. Cause but, you, um, yeah. up, you leave like a little uh, trail of debris behind you with that. That's what I do. And you've got the debris behind you to clean up. Yeah. You know, it's like, Oh man, you know, like, <laughs> Not that it's horrible, but you know, like I said, you know, everybody's got their thing, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm trying to do other things I do. Sometimes I just try to take a step back and breathe, but a lot of times, like you forget to even do that, you know. But mm-hmm. I, I do that, you know. Like sometimes, like, like my daughter's doing something, I want to just be like, oh, like, <sighs> Rosie, <laughs> you know, instead of just being like, what are you doing, you know? Yeah. Like, you know, but yeah, the more breathing, like. Breathing work. Yeah. And the more you can like intercept that with the breathing, it'll start to become like, you know, a habit and like second nature to get that space between your frustration. I know know a lot of people meditate, which is probably something I remember like at one point I started, it didn't last, it didn't last long. It didn't last, I don't even think a week. Yeah. But I mean, like, it's probably something I should probably (laughs) <laughs> start doing I, and you know and um i'm the type of person that like i don't rip on anybody or look down on anybody for doing anything like whatever helps you in your life Absolutely. some people are religious some people are i don't know some people whatever everybody does their own thing you can't knock them for what they do you know what i mean like whatever helps you better you in your life so be it you know what i mean like everyone is different and everyone takes the different stuff you know what i mean it's like whatever is going to help you in life you know yeah but you know i don't knock it you know what do you do yoga what do you do whatever you know like yeah it's all pop stuff yeah you should try meditating though because it it does like it helps you because the the med- even if it's like 10 minutes sitting there yeah focusing on your breath, realizing you're thinking about something else, coming back to your breath, you're thinking mm-hmm. about something else again, coming back to your breath. Like that is what helps to like, um, it's like the muscle for like uh, patience really, you know? Yeah. And like, and so the more you meditate and you're exercising that patience muscle, then when you're like in the moment, like with your kid, then like your brain's already kind of wired to like stay more grounded yeah absolutely mm-hmm. totally yeah i mean I, I i think about it all the time i always say this wow maybe i should meditate again and i don't know i have still gotten busy yeah. <laughs> i don't know I mean, honestly like right now I'm, I'm in a pretty good state of mind so i feel like i don't need it you know that's but if a I perfect do... time to start doing it then because you won't get as aggravated with the practice because you're already in a better place yeah interesting yeah it's you know definitely something i've been thinking about maybe trying to do you know yeah. I'll see. like I said you know what um I got really used to being home uh-huh like being on the road there's no escape from people you know what I mean like sometimes so I don't know I may go a little crazy on the road I mean <laughs> I mean need something I'm gonna send you when we're done and I'll link it for people when they watch the podcast too but um mm-hmm. it's a Spotify link and it's seven minutes And when I don't have time for like a 20 minute meditation thing, or for a while, I wasn't meditating. I was doing it all the time. I stopped for a while and then Mm -hmm. just to kind of get back into it, seven minutes and it's, um, singing bowl, like it's different tracks that correspond with different chakras, but it's just, it's Mm -hmm. super chill listening to a singing bowl, seven minutes. So you have time for seven minutes. Sure. Absolutely. Try it. I'll send you the link. Totally. Yeah. Please do. (laughs) Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. So do you have a quote that you like a lot? I do. I kind of wrote it down because I forget everything. But uh, yeah, I I feel like this is what has worked for me. I was like, if you want to succeed, you have to put in the time, your heart, your soul, and absolutely everything you got into it. Yeah. Because there's like half measures don't avail to anything it's it's you know what i mean like if, if you're gonna do something you gotta do it you gotta do it 100 percent. like even when i even when i started doing art again like i, I mean I've, I've, the thing is like i've always done art as a kid but then i got very into music like i actually you know i went to school i went to college to become an advertising artist and i fucking hated it okay it was just to me it wasn't it wasn't like art it wasn't it wasn't fun 
it was no fun. It was very competitive. And I'm like, uh-huh. like this sucks. And I dropped out of college and then as music, it was, I, I was kind of just like, it turned me off to art and everything. I stopped doing it for a very long time. I would do a little graffiti here and there, but like, you know, just to kill some time to sketch here and there. But um, I stopped pretty much doing art, you know? And then when my life changed, when I basically, when I had my, I had the baby, when I rose, I, I didn't have, my wife had rose. <laughs> to clear that up. Although, these days. <laughs> oh, we days. had it together, but she did all the work. Yeah. Uh, so when we had the baby, like, and, and then, because I moved to Jersey, and, 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 like, I was living in Manhattan, you know, so I was, so I became a suburban dad, like, like that, you know? I had to, like, challenge my energy into doing something else, so I, I started doing art again. And I started doing it, and I know, like, whatever. I know people talking shit, like, 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 what's he doing? He's doing art, and like, it sucks, and blah blah blah. And all right, but whatever, you know. I really, I just, I didn't give a shit what anybody else thought. You know what I mean? Like, so I just started doing it, and then I, I made something for a friend of mine at a party, and everyone was like, "Oh, it was really cool." You know, I did like graffiti on a record, you know, and, and then like people were like, "Oh, it was cool." Do you sell those? And I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> Sure. And I got like three orders that day, you know? So then I just, from there, just started doing stuff. And and I just got really into it. People like laugh. I, I know, you know, like some people, I'm not even mentioning these ones. A lot of people are laughing at me. You know what I mean? And it's cool. You know, it's like, cause, cause look at me now, you know what I mean? And just, cause I just put everything I had into it. And I just put my whole, everything I had, I just like put so much time and like, just everything into it. And then like, I got better and better and better by the year. And now like I've built it up into a business basically, you know what I mean? So like, and just like, even before that I was doing barbering, I needed a second job to make money. You know what I mean? Like I just put my all into it and I wound up working in, you know, awesome barbershops, you know, and I got pretty decent at it, like pretty quick because I had no choice to, because I had to make money. And I was like, you gotta, you know, you gotta, to succeed you got you know you gotta put if you put everything into what you want to do just like the music look at that you know like who the hell would have thought i'd be in a touring band like you know like it's just like it's just just like you said you got to put everything into what you want to do and i think you'll succeed you know what i mean and whatever you want to do you know but it'll, if you don't put the time in you know yeah. don't bother yeah, right. And, and yeah. you can't have high expectations if you don't, if you're not doing anything to like back it up, you got to have the action. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, like nothing, you're not going to get no way sitting on your ass. Yeah. And for the people who were laughing at you then, they are full of insecurities and whatever. You know what I mean? Because like, who looks oh, yeah. like, so it's like just for, that's just something that drives me nuts it's like people who like shit talk or whatever it's like you you've got internal issues <laughs> yeah that's fine you know it made me strive to be better yeah yeah i take that and, I, and it fuels my fire yeah i yeah. i call that um and this just came up with someone else i was just talking to i think it was the last interview i was doing um i call that fuck you fuel <laughs> fuck you fuel i like that yeah that's great yes uh, <laughs> So the tagline for my business, because I do the interviews, but then I also do like wellness coaching and I sell supplements and stuff, um, okay. is delay dying. So I like to ask everybody, if you had to give someone advice or tips on how to delay dying, or like in other words, live happier and just healthier, what would you say? Definitely work out. I mean, like, you know, because that like I, when I stop working out and I, I always fall into little slumps of like not working out like all the time, you know, I just get lazy, you know, and that's when I become like, I become miserable, you know, it's when I start feeling like shit, I start looking like shit, um, like any, get find some sort of way of working out, like some sort of exercise, because you know, exercise is really key, you know, it really is. Uh, and, and especially for like young, young kids, you know what I mean? Young, young children, you know, like, you have to try to find a way to make a living something that you love to do mm-hmm. because if you do you know, like if you do like I feel like I don't even though I work I work really hard I have a really really strong work ethic but like I don't feel like I work you know what I mean because I love my jobs and that's really important for mental health because 
you have to be happy in life. You know, you have to, um, there's always going to be things in life you don't like to do that you have to do, but like, you know, if, if you enjoy what you're doing every day, then like, that's really a, a, a big key to life. It's, it makes, it's, you just, you don't want to like wake up. I see so many people wake up in their nine to fives and be just so miserable and they hate their lives, you know, yeah. just the money sucked them in, you know, and now they got these lives, they got the house and this and that and how many kids and they can't quit this job now because they need the money to, to support their family. You know what I mean? So it's just like, they wake up and they're fucking miserable every day. And it's just mm-hmm. like, cause they didn't take the time to either follow their dreams or, you know, Hey, life is hard. Not, not everybody was as lucky as, as myself or whatever, you know what I mean? But like try, that's what I try to tell my daughter, you know, like you have to find some, I mean, she, she still doesn't get, it. she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but I'm like, you know, like you have to find something to do. You need money to survive in this life. Yeah. You have to find something to do that you enjoy doing. Yeah. Because a lot of people too are so focused on the future. Like, oh, when this happens, I'll be happy. Or, you know, Mm -hmm. after when I get this job or this, but it's like, we really only, everyone says it, but it's true. We only have this present moment. So like, you gotta be happy today. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. You gotta do it now. And especially like, you never know what could happen. I mean, you could be super healthy and get hit by a car or something you know like yeah but yeah. i say do it now enjoy your life like just try to you know i, I mean good friends is, is is very important you know what i mean that's very important to have good friends you know what i mean i have friends all over the world i'm you know like and i still speak still speak to and hang out with my high school friends like you know do you really yeah absolutely you know i mean i don't hang out and see them as much as i do you know and sometimes they're like like, Gal, we haven't seen you, you know, like, come on, you know, like, but I, I do, I mean, I'm on the text thread with them. I talk to them every day, you know what I mean? Like, it's, you know, like, it's important, you know, good friends. Yeah. That, that helps too. That's another good thing, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Community is huge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. So do you guys have anything cool coming up this summer, like August or September? We are actually off all August, September. We will be back out on the road with Sick of It All again on awesome. the West Coast. So that's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait for that. Uh, we just we just did like three weeks with them and just like it was just nonstop laughter, just constant ball breaking and just a lot of fun, you know? It's, it's, I mean, we all kind of grew up playing together for, yeah. for so long. So pretty awesome to just hang out with your friends and have a great time. It was awesome. Yeah. And so we got that. Uh, does Pete, was he exercising as much as he says he does when he's on tour? Oh, yeah. He's addicted to it. That's like his absolute crack. Yeah. Yeah. He is. Um, I mean, it's, talk about him. Like, he'll tell you about, you know, exercise is key to everything. He loves it. Yeah. You know? When I, when he's I, he's in a lot better shape than me, but, um, <laughs> you, know, you know, you know, I like to eat pizza and work out. So, yeah. I'm a little fluffy around the edges, but I don't care. I enjoy eating pizza. That's what makes me happy too. Pizza. I even have a tattoo on my hand. Yeah. Um, there you go. Oh yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you know, good food. That's another key to life. You have to enjoy eating good food. Yes. You know? It's important. It makes you happy yeah. now, but everything in moderation, of course, right? But Absolutely. still. Not like I stick to that, but yeah. <laughs> and that, like that's another key thing. I say this about everything in life from politics to to drugs to food to to everything like moderation is the absolute key to life Mm -hmm. it really is you know what i mean like i feel like now like we're trapped in a society of like left versus right and just like i mean like it doesn't matter who's in office right side left side it's still fucked up agreed it, it, it's crazy you know what i mean like I, I you know and it's just like so many people on one side or another and it's just like a little too much of this is no good a little too much of that is no good like and like i feel like if we're ever <laughs> it'll never happen in our lifetime if we're all ever gonna get along we need to do what's good 
not what's just good for you, but what's good for us as a whole, as a country. You know, we need to like f- real figure out realistically what's going to work. You know, not everything on the right side or not everything on the left side is going to work. It's just not going to happen. It's just, yeah. It's, yeah. it's wild. You know, it's like you have to just, yeah, moderation is key to everything. Yeah. Like, absolute. Turn the TV off, eat some pizza, listen to Agnostic Front, buy yeah. some of your artwork, you and go. everyone will be in a better place. It's true. <laughs> Anything else you want to touch on? I don't know. Um, I think, I don't know. I think I said my piece. I don't know. If you have any other questions, I'm all ears. I'm, you know. No, this was good. I like, because um, I like talking about like the, um, you know, the parenting kind of thing, because I think it's like mm-hmm. a doorway into more into your values. And, and that's the kind of stuff that I just like talking about with people. And I think yeah. we check that box. So I'm good. Absolutely. Absolutely. Are you a parent? I'm not. No, I do not no. want children. I don't blame you. You know, what? Some, <laughs> not, it's, it's, it's like I said, it's a tough job. Um, mm-hmm. And there's a lot of people out there that have kids that shouldn't have kids. Yep. You know, and I think that's the, one of the biggest problems today. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, there's so many parents just have kids because they were, I mean, like I'm on the talk. Like so many kids that have kids because they were, you know, irresponsible or whatever, you know, uh-huh. but just, you know, but like, it's tough. You know, parenting's a tough thing. It really is. Like my brother was like, I don't want kids, you know? Yeah. You know, it's yeah. fine. I used to have people tell me like, oh, it's okay. Like, cause I was married before too. And I'm like, no, like we're not having kids. I don't, I don't want kids. And they're like, that's okay. I'm like, thanks. I know it's my choice. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. You know, if you don't want to have kids, don't have it. Cause like some people just aren't good with kids. Yeah. Yeah. My problem is like, I would care too much. I, it would stress me out too much. It would be because like, I mean, I have two cats and like yeah. they they worry me enough and like their health yeah. issues and all you know and i'm like my god like i would just lose my fucking mind trying to keep you know another human feeling awesome like it would just deplete too much for me it's a lot it's a really lot it yeah really is. but then and again it also i mean there's no like it's like it's a different kind of love that's what everybody says it is, it is. it's a different kind of, you'll like like as much like you know, as much as I love anyone in my life, there's no one that I love like more than my daughter. You know what I mean? Like, like you know, when I had a little monkey in my arms, you know what I mean? Like, it's like a nice little feeling, you know. And um, it's like so. It's like like my favorite feeling is like when I pick her up from school, you know. And she's like, "Daddy!" And she comes. She's excited to see you. It's nice, you know. Yeah, that's sweet. It's a nice thing, you know. It, it keeps me happy. Mm-hmm. And grounded, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, like I said, it's not for everybody. It really yeah. is. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to say that we had an awesome chat. And also oh. for people watching on the YouTubes, uh, the artwork behind you is uh, yours. So that also explains your art. Oh, yeah. Totally. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It's like self-promotional. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, thank you for making time to talk and to, you know, share your thoughts and experiences. It's been awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much, too. It was awesome. Nice talking to you.